G'day guys, welcome back to the channel. It's Eno here from Fantasy Take TV. Today we'll be going over round five, the round five review. I almost forgot what round it was then. Um, yeah, decent week for myself. Great week for the community. Uh, I'll get into that, although we'll probably do that on the on the podcast as well. But um, moving up in the ranks seems to be just the common theme for, for most people at the moment. So um, yeah, Discord and community is doing really well. Uh, about half my rank, I guess, a little bit better, uh, just to 1,075. So um, just outside the top 1K, um, 9 out of 10 league wins. I think, can't remember who beat me, but we might, we might find that out. Um, got a big win in draft in, in the, the Hasbulla League, you know, against Paulie, Paulie B, so that's that's the more important one. Um, massive, I'm going to have Neil Captain as well, so uh, almost 2,000, which look, it's only, I think, a six-man league, so it's not, you know, we all got pretty decent teams, but um, had a massive week in that. Uh, and yeah, I used the one trade um, last week, which we might as well get into, getting in... Um, Samson Ryan, which which looked pretty good for a half. I was I was buzzing, but he but he just continued to drop marks. Uh, unfortunately, we did under kick over kick him a few times, but he did get his hands to 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 a couple and and that he should have clunked. Did kick a goal, but probably could have had a couple more. Um, so that was a little bit disappointing. Um, but I still think he's gonna gonna be good. Make us some money. Just you know might not get that one fifty k from you know he's got to get to three hundred to. Uh, to be sort of totally worthwhile, but he does provide ruck cover. But in saying that, I've already got that. So um, hopefully he, some better scores uh, coming soon. I think he might have gone and Grundy though this week with Gorn back. So we'll see. Um, so yeah, I did that trade, did C-Mac out in the end. I was sort of tossing up who would go out. It was Alwyn Davey at times. It was even Warple early in the week. But but obviously with Day remaining out, I kept him. It was even Rouston, which we'll get to as well. But uh, opted for C-Mac, knew he was a sub. He came on, and, and I think he, what, matched his break-even, or did he just get... I don't know why I'm searching C-Mac. I think he, yeah, went down 100 bucks. so... Look, that's unfortunate. His break-even's now up to 89, so... I sort of, knowing that, he was going to be traded out for me this week anyway, which he will be for a lot of people, so I just preemptively did that last week. Um, gives me some options where I could save a boost, possibly, but I probably still will be just boosting. But it does at least give me some money, you know, so I can get the, the premium I want. But we'll get to that later. Um, Dawson, ridiculous, amazing. Um, obviously, wish I VC'd in the last two weeks, but have uh, somehow found a way not to. But to be fair, I've got some other pretty good options. But, you know, he's another consideration this week for sure. One I may go. They cost, he's just going to get 35 to 40 every week, isn't he really at this point? Like, it's just it's just ridiculous what he's doing. Um, so I don't see any other reason that he's, you know, going to average anything less than probably 120. You know, that would have to be a bit of a drop-off to probably even go that low in in a sense. But um, you'd expect some down games for him at some point, but to be honest, it's, it's hard to see. Sicily is a bit of a concerning one. Look, he's someone that a lot of you might be eyeing off as non-owners, but... If you watched on the weekend, it wasn't great signs. Um, I think GWS kicked 16 or 17 points, and he only had one kick out from all those. And look, usually that's not the worst. Hardwick or whoever's taken it will often go to him in the pocket or wherever he is, but at Norwood, that's not really an option. Um, and possessing the ball back there isn't really an option either. You don't have much work, uh, room to work with. So it's annoying that he just didn't get those kick-ins and get you know the free 40, 50-meter long bombs that, that he would. You know, Even four or five of them would have helped. Um, him going sort of 110 plus, but um, yeah, a little bit of a concern. I want to see that change. I want to see what happens down in Tassie this week on a bigger ground, but um, yeah, obviously I'm not, not trading him. Um, just hasn't gone as well as I would have liked. Can be a little bit concerning here, probably. I mean, he might get rested this week, but to be honest, they again don't really have much on the list, so they might have just subbed him out to, to make sure that he can play the following week, knowing that the game was sort of done, so um, we'll see what happens there, but I think he's going to be a popular trade out nonetheless because he sort of reset his break even with, or it's gone back up to 80 now, sort of after uh, that 100 has come out. So, you know, with a, with a 70, if he was able to do that, it kind of does go back down again. Um, and then you could hold on to him for a little bit longer, but um, if you want to make an upgrade, he's probably fine to trade this week, in my opinion. McKenna, um... Look, similar to him, he sort of had, I think, an 80, uh, 86 there, which is in there for one more week. So his break even is 25. So I think you give him one more week, see how he goes. He could, you know, if he goes well, 
scores an 80 plus again, then obviously he's a longer term hold. Um, but say he went something like 50, then it's probably shooting up to 70, 80, and you could, you know, think about trading him. So we'll see how he goes. He, he can get, definitely get one more week at least. Will not the same. Sort of getting a 68 here is nice. His break even is down at 23. So he can be held for a couple more weeks. Um, he's just been really consistent, you know, 50s and 60s. Uh, hopefully there's a bigger game in there soon. It would be nice, but um, can't complain with him. And Cowan just isn't isn't getting the job done, unfortunately. Um, thought maybe with a few players out, you know, Doc, um, obviously Saar got injured late, but he just isn't getting enough of the ball, more playing a lockdown defensive role, um, unfortunately. So, um, look, he's not really worth trading, but he's uh, hopefully just going to keep playing. Um but, but there might be someone like a Chin Cotter coming in soon, uh, knocking down the door. And then Constable, look, unlikely gets back in, but but obviously, hopefully, he does, uh, you know, during the year at some point. Clary, so we went here with the VC. He was looking very, very disastrous early. I think 10, a half, 10 at quarter time, 30 at half time. It only touched it about 10 or 11 times. Um, and he just monstered in the second half. And look, the game was largely over. Um, and he had about 20 touches in the last quarter, but, uh, look, to, to, to muster a 115 out of what was looking like a really dire, you know, 80 or something, um, which would have really helped non-owners, um, we just can't complain. So, love that from Clary, and he's got a really, really nice draw coming up with, you know, Anzac Eve, could go massive against Richmond like he did last year, North could do that again, and then Gold Coast, who, you know, I think he's always gone pretty well against. Very, very nice draw. Um, we'll be looking to VC most weeks, um, which we'll talk about, but uh, might be hard this week. Bont, uh, really good. His best game of the year. Um, and just, you know, did slow up in the last quarter, I want to say. Him and English were sort of kept off the ground. I mean, the normal rotation, they just couldn't get back on for a little bit there. And while the game was close, they sort of, uh, you know, struggled to uh, really kick on, but um, still a really good game from him. Uh, Tom Green, look, has been disappointing for the last two or three weeks, but I'm not overly concerned what i am concerned with is he might get suspended so um if it's two weeks people a lot of people are going to be tempted to trade i think i would still hold a player rookie or two that i'll get in this week for for two weeks so i think he can come back and go you know 110 he's averaging i think the second most disposals in the league now um might even still be first but it's just not quite doing it a lot of clangers sort of freeze against and some handball clangers at um you know, it'd be great if he wasn't wasn't doing so. Look, he can put it together and, and go 120, 130 for a little stretch at some point. Um, so I'm not too concerned with him. Just hope he doesn't get suspended. Um, Rosie was really good in the third quarter, came came quite good, and then uh, a little bit missing in the fourth. So, look, they're sharing their CBAs a little bit more than we'd like. Um, I think oh, Francis got a bit more in the second half. Butter is getting a lot more now. Um, they're still sort of drew. I think Boker's lost all his, but they're still... Um, Ollie Wines, of course. So it's sort of like a four-man even spread instead of um, sort of like a main three. So, um, look, I think still Rosie will be fine. He's still going to um, go quite well. But, yeah, a um, little bit annoying, but obviously not thinking of trading him out. Setterfield, um, look, the one gripe I would have with my team, you know, it's going well. I can't deny that, is that I went Setterfield over Zebul at, at the sort of juncture in round three. Um, look, partly is due to little bit of me just not wanting to own Zeeble in general, but like putting that aside, Supercoach has been, I mean, they've both been fine, but, but Zeeble obviously has the DPP, can be a, a keeper in either defense or forward, um, possibly, whereas Setterfield kind of just isn't a keeper, you know that. Um, but I don't mind that either, because I kind of want to get Setterfield to a premium of my choice. Um, but look, if people are able to keep Zeeble for the full season, that's going to be, that's going to be, uh, you know, a, a cross for me. Um, but he was fine, you know, he tackles hard, he, he's always going to score, you know, 80 plus to me minimum with his role and, and what he does. Just hopefully there's a bigger game coming soon, because I'm going to hold on to him, I think, for one or two more weeks. Um, so look, Pies is an easy Anzac day this week, they they do take a lot of this, the, the points up, but um, we'll see how he goes. Hopper really good, so obviously happy, stuck with him. Um, you know, faded out last week, but obviously was able to keep it going this week, which is good. Warple, you know, was just was debating trading him, but obviously kept kept faith or just held him really with Will Day out and, and C-Mac knowing that he was a sub. So he sort of, you know, had to get a, at least a decent role. 
Look, 34 touches, 7 tackles to only turn up is quite frustrating, but that's just Warple. So as long as he gets that role next week, which he probably should again with um, with uh, with Will Day still out, um, then I think we, we hold for one more and he's sort of reset his break even. Now with, I think, what, that 50 dropping out, so... Well, the 45 goes, you know, 75, 100, the last two. Now his break even's back down to 30. So um, we sort of hold on to him for one more and maybe another one after that. It sort of depends on how him and Setterfield go and, and what upgrade I want to make next week. So uh, we'll get to that. Ashcroft just being pretty decent all year. You know, you can't complain about 77, you know, almost 80 average from, from a, a first-year player. Um, you know, 55 first week, but since then it's been really good. You know, GWS and Freeman aren't, aren't the hardest matchups coming up, and Brizzy sort of, you know, maybe they're starting to get on a roll after after the weekend. We'll, we'll see, but um, yeah, he won't be going anywhere soon for me. And then Baker, pretty good, but has obviously lost that 95 out of his cycle, so he's someone that you know will be trading this week, and I don't think um, that'll be uh, too unpopular. Davy, so look, hopefully he comes back. Kind of hope he doesn't for one more week with with looping opportunities. Um, you know, playing the last game of the round. But I think he will at some stage, and it probably is this week. Rouston, really good. Um, look, the sub, obviously, but to score 42 in the last quarter was really, really uh, surprising and, and, a, and a, you know, a good thing to see um, because hopefully that means he can get his spot back. He, he really came on and applied pressure. I think I checked he sort of had like 13 pressure acts in the quarter, four tackles, I think about six touches, seven touches. So like a 30, 30 something dream team quarter from him really they just injected him into the midfield and late in the game and uh, he really put his his best foot forward so look hopefully he, he can get back into the 22 Perryman isn't far away so it's a bit hard to see but um you know maybe he can get into the full team this week have a good one and then um you know you never know there could be injuries it could be something i think o'halloran played right so you know surely he's ahead of him Perryman can maybe come in for him when he's fit we'll, we'll see English, so yeah, was kind of, you know was kind of playing rolling with the the Clary one fifteen. Didn't want to cop any you know English injury or something unlucky. So um, was contemplating that. Had sort of an hour to decide, but just went with English in the end. And, and thank God I did. It just really is just stuck to that one thirty nine at the moment. Isn't he? I think he's scored that three times now, uh, if I'm not mistaken, which is which is pretty funny. So one thirty four, one thirty nine, one thirty nine, one forty five, one thirty nine. So obviously we've only had the last three scores of that, but. Um, uh, or two actually, only two because I got him in after after round three. But yeah, pretty pretty nuts, isn't it? So captain option, op, you know, option every week. Obviously gets Shrek this week, which would be interesting. Um, you know, big big match up there. Uh, but we'll see. You know, obviously going to be popular VC. Um, but I'll get to that in a bit. And then Rowan uh, bounce back, obviously with not much of a match up. Uh, McStay injured early, and then Frampton fresh the game. So got a little bit lucky there. You know expected this from him it's it's whether or not he can push on now and he could have been bigger too he had a lot of clangers as well i think you know six seven plus so um not great but uh we'll take the 120 of course and the forward line dunks finally showing what he can do Torano just always going to do this thing i don't know why anyone was sort of ever contemplating not starting him this is what he's going to be uh he's not going to go 140s but he's not going to go 80s either he's just going to do this most weeks golden um you know not too great, you know, does a lot of things um, with little touches, which is good. Like, he doesn't need a heap of it to, to score okay, but obviously more would be better. Jeez, all nuts. The fact that he's 4.30 now is crazy. Chandler, pretty decent. Someone that could be on the chopping block. Um, I don't love it, though, with his, you know, Tigers this week. Could be really good. North Gold Coast, like that, he could really reset and go bang and get up to 350 plus. Sort of a risk you take if you if you want to trade him out, but we'll get to that as well. And then Radagalea, what a nice surprise! I obviously loop Samson here with his fifty six, and um, not sure whether I wanted to take that or not. I sort of knew I probably would want to take it over Fergus, but obviously that was twenty points extra. I would have got two, but but Rat after you know his game last week, knowing that sort of West Coast just not great at the moment they were going to be bombing it in that's exactly what happened in the first quarter and to be honest he was on 40 and it could have been 60 or 70 he just every kick he butchered he took an intercept turned over the kick took an intercept kick it on the full it was just really frustrating knowing that he could be on a lot lot more and then to be honest he didn't do anything after that Geelong sort of started to dominate in the second half when West Coast actually kicked a few goals he just kind of got I mean the game was over um he stopped sort of trying as hard and just didn't get any more marks, I don't think, after that. I think he had seven or eight in the first quarter and one after that. So, um, 
look, it could have been a much, much bigger score, which is funny, but we'll still obviously take an 88 every day of the week. So what do I do with my team this week? Well, I have two options. Um, either I can only, or I can use just two trades, save a boost. That's through trading Warple though and Jinbi. So be something like Chiesel to defense, Rosie into the forward line, which is probably going to be what I'm doing no matter what I do. I'll move this over so you can see. Um, getting in Tuku, who's just my number one target. I really, really want to get him in this week, no matter what. And then Matty Roberts. Obviously, that gets Warple out, though, who could be another good field option this week. And as I said, this break even's back down to 30. You could probably hold him for another couple of weeks, really, but probably just one since Will Day's coming back. Keeps, you know, a few rookies on field here. Keeps set of field. Have to field Chandler and, and Redick Lee again, which I'm not too, you know, against. And then obviously that's saving a boost, which is a positive. So negative is probably trading out Warple here, the positive saving a boost. Not doing that. We trade out Baker, who's going to be popular trade out option. We boost, of course. And now we have to find 93K here to, to make these trades. Um, and it's really hard. You know, Cowan to Chincotta is something I am thinking of if he gets named. Um, so he's not actually going to be here since he hasn't played yet, but going first game on a rookie, I just don't like, not sure how long you'll play. You're wanting to play five or six, obviously to get good cash out of him and picking him before he's played one is a bit silly. So that's, that's an option probably down there. Um, another one is doing Wilmot out early, which I don't love either. And grabbing someone like, uh, Seamus Mitchell, who looked quite good. In his first game for Hawthorne, took a few kickouts, took the game on. Uh, really liked what I saw from him. That's another option, but again, that's sort of culling Wilmot early and also going Mitchell still a week early before the bubble. So, unfortunately, the most logical one looks like Chandler out, which kind of sucks. Bringing in Dylan Williams, which isn't the greatest job security for me. I can also do this where I, I shove Matty Roberts to the forward line. I scroll down. Um... And then grabbing uh, uh, Matt Johnson as well as another option. So, you know, it was sub for a couple of weeks like Matty Roberts. Um, and, then, and then got his first full game in the weekend. Unfortunately, he played a bit of, you know, wing early. Then Brody got subbed on and played mostly forward. So, kicked a goal in the last quarter. Nice clutch goal to uh, help Frio get the win. But um, I don't love his job security either. So, a few options there. But really, the, 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 the two coming in with Miller and... Uh, Tukin, Tuk Miller and Matty Roberts are probably non-negotiable. It's it's the outs and whether I boost, and if I boost, which uh, route do I go? Or obviously, if I don't boost, um, getting rid of Warple uh, when he probably still has a bit more cash to make. Well, he does. So, a little bit uh, torn on what to do there. Let's say I go for this. Chandler route early, I really don't, I don't love it, but, but, you know, making upgrades always nice. He just really could go well against Richmond and then North in the next two weeks. So, it's a little bit scary, but uh, obviously get two key into the midfield. Field McKenna and Wilmot still got a got a nice back line there. Um, you know, really good up three big primo mids. Tom Green, if he gets suspended, then I just field one of the rookies. Probably Rouse and might take his you know part of his role. Set the field Hopper still, Warple still. So still got those guys who are pretty good for ninety to to a hundred most weeks, which which is good. Ashcroft as well. Got this down here, and then I'll just have to make a decision here and fielding two of these rookies, uh, you know, not, not able to loop, unfortunately, with Madden playing so early. And we'll just have to, um, you know, play a bit of rookie roulette in the forward line. So um, that's sort of where I'm looking at. Uh, for captaincy, obviously, English could be a big popular VC. Could roll with that, especially with Madden playing fairly early. Uh, a lot of people will. Um, Constable, if I could use Constable later on here, you could go someone like a Dawson against Hawthorne, which I don't mind. Laird, if you've got him, uh, and then into Clary C or, or Took C if I'm feeling it, but obviously Clary you just feel a lot more safer with. And then if Alwyn Davy, as I said, is out again, which which would be a little bit more handy, then you could actually do Took into Clary uh, and then use Alwyn as the loop. Uh, which would be good. So that's sort of the options. Have to wait for teams there. Also, if you want to use Constable, you've got to know that he's, you know, or be confident that he's not sub, which you won't know till Friday as well, you know. So um, well, you won't actually know till before the game if he's emergency, but yeah, you, you'll know if he's in the emergencies Friday at 5 p.m. So no more Thursday football helps a bit, but um, yeah, I think the most one I'm leaning towards is that Dawson into Clary using Constable. Uh, and then look, 
worst comes to worst, you just have to see clarity if, if Constable doesn't, um, you know, his sub or he's playing for whatever reason. So that's the way I'm leaning at the moment. I don't, you know, going against English VC seems a little bit silly, but I'm not sure how well he'll go against a big Shrek. So um, a little bit, you know, not concerned. I mean, he hasn't played much full-time ruck here. You know, 143, I, to be honest, that probably wasn't even number one ruck. That was probably pinch hitting and, and he kicked a few goals without checking. So way back in 2022, don't really count those fraudulent scores back then. Um so, yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Let me know how you're going. Uh, what do you think I should do with those trades? A few options there. I probably might post something on Twitter maybe or, or just so people get a bit of an understanding. But, um, yeah, it's hard to decide there. Like, if I save another boost, it'd be nice. But trading Warpool doesn't really make too much sense yet. So, um, that's my team. Let me know how you went this week. Uh, really good week for the community. up quickly look at it because why not it's uh great to look at here but you know top five leagues six actually because casbol's pies is uh one of the boys as well you know a few down here as well and then the the more surprising and nuts thing is, is if you actually click round five and i did that last week in round four and i thought this was nuts you know that's all else all us down here you know a lot of a lot of fttv leagues but you actually click it in round five and it's genuinely like every league besides two two or three that are just us with the most points for the week so look to be fair there's a lot of crossover we do have a bit of a you know uh, hive mind going on of course as, as most communities do but it's really paying off this year and, and a lot of people are going really really well so thanks for watching guys uh we'll see you on the uh, podcast tomorrow night i believe and um i hope your team's going well cheers <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>